Us, everyone. Us, welcome to the Kyokushin Shuffle. Thank you very much for everyone's support, love, um, and what an amazing month it's been. We've released the uh, Forever the Student ebook, and thank you for all of those that have downloaded that. Uh, the full version will come out in November and be for sale. I can't, I th can't thank you enough for everyone being a part of it. But here we have it. We have a an almighty guest. I've got to put this uh, respectfully. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute honor to have Hunchy, Doug Holloway from New Zealand in Wellington. Hunchy, an honor to see you, an honor to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the opportunity. Hunchy, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, this is uh, when, I, when you gave me the okay from Shia and Mike Kenworthy to have a chat. Uh, I got to be honest. I was like, I, where do where do we start? You know, where where do I start this this amazing journey? And and I go back to what I was just saying earlier. This is a highlighting, you know, amazing people from my view of Kyokushin and martial arts. And you know, firstly and and, and foremost, how are you? And how's everything going in Wellington? Yeah, it's going well. Um, it's life as normal now. Uh, we had a lockdown a while ago, but yeah. uh, no, things are good. Yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. That's Cross good fingers. to hear. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Hanchi, we have a, a, a chat here. It's fun. It's. It, I'm sure so many of us that are going to be listening to this are ready to go because it is. Uh, I feel you know. Uh, you know, with the relationship that Australia and New Zealand have had, uh, a whole big component of New Zealand is due to you. So let's uh, let's Thank deep dive and I break the ice in respect of how did martial arts start in your life, Hanchi? I uh, started stu studying judo um, in 1961, right. and uh, I had um, I, I trained up to green belt. Uh, there was something missing in judo, and uh, at that time, karate was just starting to hit the the screens, and mm. uh, people started getting interested. And, and uh, one of those was myself. Uh, sure. I was still at school at that stage. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, a couple of other people and I, uh, were really interested, you know, very interested in, in finding mm. out more about karate because there wasn't wasn't much around, wasn't much information. Uh, so we used to go down to boats at Bluff. I, I came mm. from a um, a small city called Invercargill, which is in the bottom of New Zealand. Okay. Yep. And we used to go down to the port at Bluff and see if there were a Japanese uh, seamen really? that might know something and uh, try yeah. to get some information from there. And occasionally, you know, some, some of them uh, knew a bit. So uh, we had a, we ultimately um, formed a dojo yeah. at the YMCA and uh, that um, led to uh, quite a few members coming in, uh, tough yeah. guys, whatever, uh, yeah. and uh, training with us. Uh, but it was almost like the uh, there was another outfit um, in, mm. in Napier, which is in the North Island. Okay. And uh, they were virtually at the same level as uh, I was at the time. And we really uh, hadn't been, to, none of us had been to Japan. Mm. Uh, they were good people and uh, they were learning like I was. Uh, so, then um, a couple of books uh, yes. hit the shelves in Whitcalls, and one was What is Karate, which was wow. by then Sensei Mazatsu Iyama. Yes. That was impressive, uh, mm. the stuff that was in there. And uh, I decided to uh, correspond with Sensei Watts. Yes. 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 And uh, he actually wrote back to me. Wow. Uh, yeah, we had a bit of an exchange of letters, yeah. several letters. Yeah. And I said, this was in 64. Wow. And I said, I'll, um, I'll be over there later in the year. Oh, wow. I'm not sure whether he, whether he believed me or not. But uh, anyway, yeah. uh, later in 64, I uh, got on a uh, JAL 707 and uh, oh, flew to Tokyo. Yep. Uh, when I got up there, I... Uh, <laughs> I uh, rented a property with uh, okay. some guys that I knew from New Zealand who were studying judo at the Kodokan. Right, right. Now, okay. One of those was Pat Tona, whom I had a, a, a lifelong friendship with. Pat, right. a, mm. a leading judoka in New Zealand. 
um, and uh, I still contact him and oh, uh, wow. we're the old fellows of the sure. martial arts now. So <clears throat> that was out of Chinonamachi, which was about 60 minutes from uh, Ikebukuro. Okay. Which was the suburb of the new uh, dojo yes. uh, that uh, Sensei had, had established and built. Uh, it was called Hombu, of course. Yes. So uh, the first night I went there, uh, took a train, several trains. Yeah, I was uh, going to say. Yeah, got there. Uh, yeah. It was very important to make sure you got off the right side mm. Mm. Uh, at the, the station, the correct side. Otherwise, you, you ended up into yeah. uh, another city. Yeah. Totally lost. Anyway, I did, did manage Good. to get that far. Mm. And asked a few people around uh, if I they see. knew who this uh, dojo was, and they did. Uh, it was uh -huh. well known, apparently. Mm. Mm. It was a cold night, uh, snowing at the time. Yeah. And uh, so wandered up to, uh, the, got the directions, went along an avenue, and then down side yeah. street. Yes. And uh, then um, I heard about uh, two blocks as it transpired from where I was going. Uh, bus. Uh, the US, right. the, the PI, yes. and uh, lots of people KIing. So I knew I was on the right track. Yes, lots of KIs, and uh, got to uh, got to the building where there was a large mosaic of uh, Sosayama fighting a right. bull. So I knew yes. it was the right location. Yeah, <laughs> uh, got in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> correct to go up to the second floor, which was the main dojo at the time. Right, right. And uh, there were a whole lot of people uh, vigorously uh, training there. Yeah. And in front of them, there was a guy who, who was unmistakably yeah. sent to Yama. Wow. Uh, full of charisma and as if nobody else was in that room. You know? mm. And mm. Uh, it was an amazing sight. And um, so I went, I was. Uh, told to go down the back of the uh, dojo which uh, the windows were all open mm -hmm. um down there met a guy in a duffel coat who turned out to be steve arneal oh, and wow. uh, yeah so, <laughs> so yeah. i got talking to him i didn't know who he was at the time but of course uh, of course went out and uh, he became my mentor over there i was very fortunate meeting steve right. um he'd uh, gone for a, a knee down grading mm -hmm. Um, one of the green belts had broken a, a couple of ribs, so he was on training at that time in the mm -hmm. new yoga, which was wasn't long established. Um, sure, and it was brand new. Uh, the shinzo was not uh, decorated. I see. It was, um, a plain shinzo. Um, they didn't uh, didn't have much decoration on the wall mm -hmm. at all because mm -hmm. it was so new. Yeah, and yeah. The, the first night I was there, I watched. Uh, they, they had a, a strenuous comité. And I uh, thought, okay, here we go. <laughs> <I'm in>. Yeah, <laughs> the guy was carried off on all fours and put around the corner. It was called Chukchen First Aid. We've yes, we since then, and uh, but he recovered. Wow. Yeah, and uh, so anyway, the next uh, the, I, the, after the class, I yes. was invited down to uh, have Ocha with with Senso Yama in the office. Oh, well. Um, and the next morning, uh, he invited me, uh, guard me out in a, in a gi. And uh, so the next morning, uh, did a workout. Uh, Good. He took, he took the classes. Um, there were two classes every day, two and a half hours each, uh, one in the morning, one in the evening. Yeah. Yes. And after the morning class, he started instructing me, which looking back, when, when you're 19, you don't and you know first time out of new zealand and yes. uh, you really don't realize what an honor that was i uh, could imagine uh, that kept going and yes. he instructed me in the mornings uh which was just fantastic because yeah. uh, i learned so much from the master yeah. and uh his strongest man i ever knew um the impression was power um, mm. stamina and just enormous charisma but uh, power mm. and stamina the strongest man I've ever known wow um, and he would do a mawashiuke and lift me around like a baby uh, <laughs> and um, I had the honor of uh, doing kamite with him 12 times oh wow uh, so, and that that was an honor um, yeah and those days, the uh, uh, 
the stance, uh, not Kamite Nakamai, was but a a rather low. Uh, yes. Kukutsadachi. I was about to say yes, yes. Kukutsadachi in those days. Of course. And, uh, the the idea was a low center of gravity. Um, yes. you know, all the power in karate comes from your hips, us. as you well know. Us. And uh, that was the emphasis. Uh, so, mm. you know, for months on end, I I train twice a day, and six days wow. a week, sometimes seven. And uh, after a while, you you start to get a bit better at all this. <laughs> and learn what it's about. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Steve O'Neill made it very clear to me that uh, what I learned in New Zealand was uh, wasn't worth knowing, and oh, right. really that uh, my karate training started there, which yes. indeed it did. Yes, yes. So, uh, wow, it was a fantastic experience. The the uh, uh, the um, workouts comprised uh, basics, hard yes. basics. Um, uh, Ikegato and um, a bit of uh, Kata, not much because um, mm -hmm. not much kata. Uh, Senso Yama had simplified katas to to make them more uh, stronger in in the Chukchan style. Yes. And we did Ida Geiko for for quite a while, a lot of Ida Geiko, um, a bit of kata, and then kamite, and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. was a major part of the the lessons there. Yeah. Uh, so I got to know uh, Sensei as he was then uh, very well, us, and us. he invited me to have meals with him uh, on occasion and meet his family. Uh, and um, so on one occasion, I recall, um, he showed me a cabinet which was full of old Chinese weapons, um, yeah, pole arms and swords. And these came from at least the, the last dynasty in China, oh, wow. uh, the Chinese emperor, imperial dynasty, That's... and some even older, uh, right. which at the time, you know, I didn't fully appreciate, but I do now. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was was... Showing me all these things. Um, he, uh, he, we, we, I, I actually was invited to buy him to uh, be part of a television uh, appearance that he made. And right. uh, so um, a couple of other senpais and I went along mm -hmm. and uh, it was to hold this very substantial, huge block of ice. <laughs> and he, he was, <laughs> so we got into the, we got into the uh, television studio and holding this block of ice and we were all standing and as in Kutsadachi and, and yes. as firmly as we could because we knew the result of, of dropping this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the lights in the studio were so hot that this mm. thing started to oh, melt. melt. Right. And so we knew that it was a one hit and, and he hit it uh, <laughs> and it shattered all over the studio. But we, wow. uh, we were all standing there holding this this thing mm. so that was a very memorable, memorable yeah uh that sort of thing you know and yeah uh, but he, he was always very good to me uh wow so yeah what a what a start <laughs> <laughs> what a start hunchy there you have it i mean there you go you're 19 years old you you've met um uh, Master Tatsuyama and, and 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 you're in Japan and the culture and you've you've met Hanchi Steve Arneal and there's just so much happening and again like you've just said at that time you not familiar and not appreciative as such until now but what a moment that would have been because it's so when stories like this come up Hanchi it's uh we have to all of us listeners go back you know try and take yourself back to the this time and appreciate how fresh and young and you know uh, rebellious as such this style was hmm. uh, it, it you know it hit the karate world uh, like a tsunami um, yeah. sensor yama had volcanic energy and yes. uh, you know his, his, his classes were uh, just etched in your memory and you, you remember these things vividly yes. um, and you know, you, you sweated and did the work uh, for, for a long, long time. Um, one of the things that uh, helped me was the performance of Peter Snell at the Olympics in Tokyo, which had been 
uh, in October. Okay. And he'd won three gold medals very spectacularly, uh, the late Peter, Sir Peter Snell. And uh, everybody knew him as soon as I said I came from New Zealand because I mm. knew I was an American. Yes. Uh, and they would identify me, uh, me uh, New Zealand immediately mm. with Snell. Mm -hmm. And I, I gained a lot of uh, uh, a lot of variety points, I think, from sure, that. Sure, sure. Uh, and the dojo had outside it as well. Uh, so as time went by, um, I uh, Western food was very expensive in Japan. Yeah. So you know, to, to eat that every day was a bit of a no-no. Yes. Uh, and so I um, I started and and I couldn't adapt to Japanese food, so I sure. ate Chinese food. There was a string of Chinese restaurants, and fortunately that that was good stuff. And uh, uh, for um, for the first month, I lost a lot of weight. Uh, yes. Because you know you're training, training yeah. every day, and uh, then after that, I started getting fit and getting used sure. to the change of diet, and so yeah, it, it was just more of the same over and over, and that's what karate is about. You know, thousands of techniques, mm. more of the same, and as dedicated as you, as you can be. That's what, that's what karate is about. <laughs> Hunchy, you you so you're 19, and I read, and if you can correct me, and, and for the listeners, so you train with uh, Sensei Sosayama at this time for uh, two, three months or such. Uh, yeah, more than that. Yeah, About six months. Six months, yeah. and then yeah. for that six months, how did you know? Because he awarded you with your Shodan, Nidan, and Sundan, correct? I had a brown belt from New Zealand before I went over there, but okay. as I say. Uh, it was made very clear to me that, uh, you know, that wasn't, uh, that really wasn't uh, a good, uh, a good beginning. My, my mm -hmm. training started when I was in Japan was... and uh, he, he awarded me uh, successively over the years, uh, Shodan and Nidan and Sanda. Wow. And, you, and, and I read that you were 22, you were one of the youngest Sundans, third dance ever at that time mm. yep yeah um but a well, bit of an honor but mm. uh i came back to new zealand after training there and i enrolled in um canterbury university as a student and mm. uh decided in may to set up uh a, a dojo at a place called can am Ju, which was the canterbury amateur judo Academy and uh, so started there. Met um, a bloke. My first student there was a bloke called Renzi Hannum, uh, who is now Hanchi Renzi Hannum of Sado, and uh, he was the he was the first student I taught uh, at Canterbury. And soon um, from the university and elsewhere, a lot of people turned up because yeah. we were the were the only karate style around. Mm. Uh, there was another one in Auckland, but you know, for the rest of the country, it was uh, just open plains. And uh, within within uh, eighteen months, I had fifteen dojos throughout the country. Oh my god! And uh, I used to go <laughs> traveling around the north. Not Island. a bad effort without internet and uh, you know, and all of the above. Fantastic. It was just you know, you had to you had to visit them, and uh, Wong sure. was one of the best, and that of course, course it's where Xi'an Mike. Uh, runs now and um, when he came back from australia uh, he went to wanganui Oof. and uh, he still runs the dojo there and i attend his dojo uh, in wellington Oof. and um but well, i had a dojo in uh, before i left for japan as i said in the yes. and one of the one of the star pupils there was a bloke called jana takatimu um in 67 we had our first tournament uh, wow. which which was brilliant because a lot of a lot of uh, people in the audience they wanted wow. to see what karate was about mm, mm. Uh, and those days you had M appeal and the Avengers and people really wanted to know what it was about uh, which was quite different to what was portrayed on television mm. but uh, it was a it was a good tournament and uh, uh, in 17 2017 uh, MOK and Z commemorated it with a yes. 50th year with and congratulations for your 50th in that on that year as well was well you. there you go yeah so there so you've come back uh 
full steam ahead is the language I use on that motion. Uh, and, and, you know, you're studying, uh, to be a lawyer, am I correct? Well, that was later. Yeah, the, okay, the first later. one I did was a BA, awesome. and uh, that was at Canterbury. And um, then um, in 1970, I decided I couldn't do much with a BA, so I decided to get a law degree and uh, wow. went to the Eden. And uh, the, the interest there was fantastic. They already had a dojo, so I started instructing there. Uh, we had over a hundred people one night. Wow! Yeah, really, you know, really interested in those days. It yeah. was great days because <laughs> today, sure, you know, it's great if you get twenty or thirty. Correct. In, the, you know, in those days, a hundred was was good. Uh, so, wow, uh, hundred. Just That's keep going. You know, it's just a lot of sweat and, and mm. just keep on persevering. Yeah. And and so you've okay. Let's just uh, let's just recap a little bit there. So fifteen dojos come under your umbrella. You're traveling around yeah. NZ. Yeah. You've got this uh, art. Let's know you know this the strongest karate as it built towards. And you're you're just planting seeds everywhere, starting to mature the the art in New Zealand. And from there, how are you? Uh, liaising with Sensei Oyama Sosai at that time, you know, because uh, you know, lead us yeah. towards that. You know, were there were there some Japanese uh, senpais coming out helping you in NZ? How no, were you sustaining no, I was, this? Uh, no, I was running the show myself, uh, totally, and corresponding with him once a week uh, oh, by letter. Letter, I was going to say yes. So, yes. You know, no, no emails or. No. Email or so Skype or anything those days. Yeah, but uh, it took a while to. But uh, we kept going like that, and um, in '68 I took a team to uh, Japan uh, oh. to Hombu from Christchurch, uh, included Renzi Hannah and uh, Trevor Trainer, uh, Jamie Tullock, Wayne Wendelkin, and Hilton LeBeau. So we went up there for uh, several months and trained at Hombu uh, very intensively. Uh, there I met um, Shihan Hasegawa, and we've been uh, friends over the years. He was the, the winner of the second uh, All Japan tournament, Oof. and also training at that time was, uh, uh, in those days, Senpai um, Yama, Yamazaki uh, and also um, Senpai Sueno. Now, Yamazaki was the... Uh, he he was a winner of the first All Japan wow. champion. Yeah. So yeah. and so when you uh, took your team over there, was the art at its phase where the kumite or the level was in in this All Japan scenario? Were the the were the uh, correct me with the punching or the grappling or the grabbing? You know the 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 mm. the the cycle of where how Kyokushin has gone. How was it in that era? Was it you know Again, we, we understand the full context side of the punches and kicks, but then in, in what is karate, and this is karate and advanced karate, there's a whole syllabus or, you know, a whole bunch of content in there that has a lot of the, the grabbing and the takedowns and so forth. How, how was Definitely that? Quite, quite different to uh, what it developed over the years, particularly as tournament karate took over. Uh, in the early days, there was a lot of grappling. Uh, so Sosai was building a different style. That was Kyushan. And he was, he'd of course studied um, Goju uh, mm -hmm. and, and before that uh, Chinese Kempo, Oof. but um, he and studied under Funakoshi uh, in 38 when he came to, to Japan. Yes. But he also studied Judo and was a very proficient judoka. And so there was a lot of grappling uh, in the dojo. Uh, as I said before, it was uh, fighting from a, a flat uh, mm. uh, kutsudachi. Uh, you had to be careful that you didn't get punched in the head because that, mm. that was on as well. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, yokogiris uh, from that, uh, from the kutsudachi stance. Uh, and I took that back to New Zealand. But um, the second time that I went to train in 68, 69, uh, they had an out for a dojo out at Josai and uh, uh, Yamazaki and Soeno senpais, they uh, used to train a lot out there and they descend on us, a group of them, 
uh, on Friday night. And it mm. was a bit of a blood bath. That was the beginning oh, of right. the, uh, the, the, uh, the low Washigetis on mm. the fight. Okay, and, right, uh, right. And that was a real crippler. So that started uh, at that time. Gotcha. That's where it originated from. Uh, and over the time, you know, instead of uh, Kokutsudachi, where there were a lot of uh, sweeps and everything like that, and instead yes. of grappling, it became more of a uh, refined uh, tournaments type karate. Right. Certainly not inferior to what we were doing at that time, mm. you know, pr prior to 68, 69, uh, and the tournament phases. But um, uh, just a different different mm. type of uh, approach to it. Um, yeah. And how, how did Sosai... Uh, I guess translate or, or interpret the the mawashigeti, you know, the the, the strong gida mawashigeti that obviously started to become effective, really yeah. effective. How was he? Like, if you could just take us, you know, into the because that became and that is the the the, the trademark as such. Yes. Well, anything that's effective yes. is what is fits in with with kyokushin. Mm. You know, that was very effective. So uh, it, it soon became very popular. Mm. Even when I was there, which was in its origin days in 68, 69. Yeah. Well, okay. So we're going into the, the, the phase where, you know, you've, you've taken a, your team, the, the art is blossoming uh, immensely in New Zealand. And again, the continuation of now the, the world tournaments start to uh, occur. And again, we're still, mm. we're still listeners. Let's 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 appreciate. There's no internet, and I keep saying that because we're so fortunate, right, to see some of these footage and some of the tapes and 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 you know all the, that type of content. But in your in in your time, it was very difficult to see what uh, the other countries are potentially doing as well. I mean, you would have had your relationship with Hanchi Neil. How was the How were you all starting to work towards that? Um, I was mainly concerned with, with New Zealand. Uh, I see. In fact, almost exclusively uh, uh -huh. concerned with New Zealand, uh, just trying to get the thing going. I was studying for a degree. Yeah. Uh, getting getting Chukchen as much as possible through the country. Mm. And uh, when I, I was lucky enough to, to train with certain people uh, like Tadashi Nakamura, Wow. And uh, Sensei Kurosaki and uh, Kapo, who, who went to Australia, uh, people like Ashihara. And uh, so they all had their own distinct styles, you know. And so I based what I was teaching in New Zealand on what I'd seen those guys do. Uh, when I was in Japan the first time in 65, 64, 65, I bought some. Uh, photographic film filming uh, oh. equipment, double eight camera, and which was you know, ancient now, but good <laughs> for the day. And yeah, it would be. Just kept trying to persuade Sensor. I said, "Look, I've, I've got to show people who know nothing about karate sure. uh, back in New Zealand what it's about." And uh, uh, that was uh, he resisted that for a long time. Okay. And, just before I left, the week before I left, he said, okay, um, really? I'll let you uh, film in the dojo. So I actually stood up near the, near the end of the Shinza us, us. with the camera roll. And uh, they had uh, Tadashi Nakamura and another Nidan wow. and uh, Senpai Kato Ashihara and several other uh, very good karateka uh, fighting everyone else in the dojo. Now I've got that footage and uh, I'm, I'm going to put it on Facebook soon. That, oh, that, wow. Well, well, there you have it. How special is that? Karate Facebook. So that's it's Oops. coming soon Oops. Yeah, in New Zealand. Very cool. Okay, so then there's a little bit of leniency there. And again, you can see that um, uh, the, the art is is now, you know, the, the sensational names that you've just mentioned have, have got a certain standard and level. and you know, again, you're in your early 20s still or mid 20s and bringing back the art to New Zealand and, and again, letters going back to Sosai Sensei Oyama at that time. 
how are you yeah. now starting to see what's happening? Are you, were you at a phase there or at a stage there going, shit, what have I done? <laughs> what am I, look what's yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. Studied the law degree and got that. And then I thought, well, I better start putting that to some use. Sure. At the end of 73, uh, I had a serious motor accident. Oh, sorry. And I was up for a couple of months. And uh, that uh, slowed me down considerably for at least oh. a year. Uh, but uh, fortunately, I'd, I'd uh, uh, passed all my exams and was admitted to the, to the bar. And um, then I became a lawyer. Now, to be, you know, you got to put a lot of effort into being a lawyer. So karate mm. took a bit of a back, uh, mm. a back pedal for some time in my okay. life. Mm. Uh, I married, had four four kids, Congratulations. and um, yeah, thanks. And uh, educated them, and yes. uh, didn't really do a heck of a lot uh, until uh, the mid nineties, and I then. See back into it again I, I ran my own legal practice I've had been running that since uh, since uh, 1983 nice. and uh, so that's taken a lot of time to do that and uh, so it, it took a lot of time for me and you know something had to go in those days and so karate was was part of that uh, oh, I guess in it... 95 I met a whole new lot of people yeah yeah well so you again, and I know when when this happens, listeners, and and for Hunch, you when there's a block or a, I call it, a, you know, a phase in the journey there that that jumps, you know, into a two minute uh, summary, but it's 10, 10 or fifteen years. Yeah. You know, we have to uh, appreciate that. So if you if you can just you know give us an I a bit of a and I hope to not hit too much of a nerve with it, but once you heard the news of suicide passing in in 94 what you know how did how did that affect you uh well he, he was always a, a close friend of course um, uh, and so it affected me uh mm. as far as the, the news was uh, quite devastating because he was only 71 when he died uh, so it was premature premature death mm. i think uh, and you know there's a lot of theories about what happened but one yes of them and, uh, that he had um, lung cancer and I, do, I really don't know because he never smoked um, I never saw him ever smoke and uh, I know he didn't um, I knew him well and uh, mm. so that was devastating mm. um, and as a result uh, it's Chukchen is like a, a, a shattered pane of glass uh, and it's very difficult to get factions back together again. Mm. Uh, every country has different factions of Chuksha, and including New Zealand. Us. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I know all the guys and Us. mix with them, but in particular, uh, I train with uh, the Mazoyama uh, New Zealand Chukchan Karate uh, Limited, and that's the one that uh, we form. You know, uh, Graham Gavigan and, yes. and uh, Sheehan Mike formed back in 2000. Uh, I'm privileged to train with them. Yes. Uh, they're true, true friends, great karateka. Mm. Uh, they are, both of them, a strong karateka. And I'm really privileged to, to train with mm. both those guys. Yes. Uh, Gian Alex Terrace has come in to us with us now, and I'm privileged to train with him now. He's he's had a lot of a lot of experience going back a long way. I first mm -hmm. met uh, Gian Alex back in uh, April '66. A friend of mine from Invercargill had come up and studied at uh, University of Victoria here in Wellington. Nice. Uh, unfortunately, it's Peter Cook. Unfortunately, he died in a diving died in a diving accident oh. uh, at the end of 65 and uh, the dojo wanted me to uh, grade them and amongst those who are graded was um, uh, Hanchi who is now Hanchi, Andy Barber, Sean uh, mm. Alex Terrace and uh, the oh, yeah. late Tom McCallum. Uh, so that was back in April. Uh, wow. Yeah, back in, in April 66. So uh, that's, that's going back a long way. Yeah. 
And, uh, but I've met some incredible people and, and organizations, you know, it's a well-known uh, saying that um, people make organizations and no matter what Chukchan group you're in, mm -hmm. it doesn't long, long last if you haven't got good people in it. Of course. All, all of the ones, you know, in this country are, are good folk. They, they yes. train hard. They just happen to be in different organizations. But, mm. Uh, mm. I'm, you know, your friendship with Soso was nearly over 30 years, you know, and, and, and you know, when you said you, you, you obviously focus on your professional career and your family commitments and so forth, how were you both um, communicating at that time and, and how were you uh, maintaining, you know, the balance of what was happening? Yeah, um, letters, uh, mm. correspondence with him, uh, but um, it... Uh, my emphasis was really on, and my accent was really on my career because uh, mm. I came down to Wellington and uh, was flat out for, um, for years uh, doing that. So it, it, I really took a, a back seat. Yes, from of course. Mm. Mm. And then again, the, the, the passing occurs in 94. And then you, as you said, you then had come in in around 95, you know, mid to late nineties and then started to, you know, get back into training and get back into uh, things. How had you seen the evolution and, and, and more so, you know, the, the world tournaments, you know, I had the privilege of talking to um, Nick, uh, Shia, Nick Da Costa, you know, and I've had, you know, since uh, Shia, uh, Sensei Nicholas Pettis and Sam, you know, these, le these gentlemen, these legends that have fought in those famous fourth, fifth, six world tournaments. And again, New Zealand have had some, fantastic fighters as well were you keeping across this and then at that time were you like okay this is good we've done well yeah i i was uh 99 i was at the uh, the world tournament awesome. um and uh, uh where um filio uh, yes. won for the first time against the japanese yes. it wasn't a popular decision among the crowd but uh, mm. it was great to see yeah awesome. great to fight to see and um, I've been to Japan several times since then with New Zealanders. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and we've done pretty well for a small country. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a lot and of that is the result of um, the, the instruction, you know, by people like uh, Shian Mike and nice. Shian Graham, uh, Shian Alex. Uh, we've got a Kai Khan that comprises those, those mm -hmm. stars. Um, and uh, and uh, Shihan Panina, who is uh, brilliant at organising our, uh, our our ladies through New Zealand, mm -hmm. and yes. uh, myself, so uh, we run that, and we've got a a, um, a nationwide organisation. We've got another dojo up in Nagoya. Uh, so yes, yes, we see Sean O'Connell. Yes, yeah. yeah, Sean yeah. was Sean was here uh, ten yes. days ago. Took the yeah. class. Yes. Yeah. How good is that? You know, so Hunchy, you, you, um, again, the, the training for, for a man of yourself that had seen what it was right from the beginning, absolutely right from the beginning. And then when you're in the dojo and she and Mike were saying, you just absolutely love training. You, you, you're so, you know, involved and you, you, your passion is still there. What, what, you know, when you're, when you're training and when, when you were back into the dojo, for you, you know, to have started so much and now be able to just let the others do what they have to do, were you, you know, loving the training? Were you loving being that fit, healthy person? What, 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 what is it, and what was it at that time? Yeah, uh, gradually uh, take the take the class. Uh, yeah, quite often, and uh, do as much as I can. You never get people to do what you either haven't done yourself or you're not right. prepared to do mm. so you've really got to be up there you know it's not not enough to say oh do as i say not do as i do mm. you've got you've got to get in there and and uh, no matter how old you are and uh, do do it uh decryption yeah and do it thoroughly uh yeah vigorously and dynamically you know one question that pops up within you know the, the the circles in in the kyokushin circles is the way it it you know ashihara branched off 
yeah. and Shin branched off. And these fantastic students of Sawside so that went their ways and started their own styles. You know, how, how are you seeing what Kyokushin is? Because you continue to train today. And are you feeling, um, I guess my question on it is now that I've said it, that I've set it up is, are you seeing the, the emphasis of more grappling, grabbing, closer contact uh, uses of, you know, hijis, you know, you there's so much technique that's in the syllabus that you would have seen a while ago that's that's again fallen into the tournament fighting yeah we i have always tried to teach traditional chukshan mm. um, but of course you must take into account the development of chukshan over the years mm -hmm. and definitely developed uh, into a different type of uh, kumite mm -hmm. than what it was back in 64, 65, where it's a lot of grappling back there, clobbering mm -hmm. in the head, unless you were careful, things like that. Um, uh, now, uh, you know, it's a different type of, mm -hmm. certainly a different type of uh, tournament kumite, but we're, we're trying to introduce a lot more grappling and stuff uh, into the dojo, which is, which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, Particularly, you, you know, in a, a fight for real out in the street, yes. uh, usually find that you, you need a bit of uh, grappling experience or some sort of experience on the ground. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're gradually gra uh, yeah. introducing that as well. And it's important. And at seminars that we hold oh. uh, each year, uh, that's important as well. Mm. When you... When you got to train with Sosa, let's just uh, let's take a step back to that that time again, and 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 some of the highlights and stories there. What were some of the things that you know? Again, sixty four, two thousand and twenty, uh, mm. that you've that you've you know kept very close to you, and I and I appreciate you sharing so much already. But those things that continue, and and you know of what Sosa had spoken to you about or gestured to you about, because there's many that have said he was twenty years ahead of his time, thirty years yeah. ahead of his time. No doubt about that, no doubt. And, and I, I think I said, said before, um, I made the point before that he really uh, hit the karate world in Japan mm. like an army. Um, you know, he trained uh, uh, outdoors, uh, which is very beneficial, um, and uh, trained for about 18 months uh, outdoors yes. and uh, hardened himself up there and... Uh, uh, he was incredibly strong, incredibly mm -hmm. strong guy. Um, far more in another dimension to two other uh, karate guy villain. So uh, to be trained by him, um, basics and, mm. and uh, you know techniques, basic uh, circle and point techniques, uh, which was right. very much uh, important in his style. Mm. Uh, so it was a different type of karate, very effective, and still remains so to this day. Yeah, the the, the, the was the term ichigeki, uh, you know, a, a a a word used then that one strike, one death type, yes, you know, uh, language. So, yeah. yeah, 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 very much. Uh, you know, you hit something, hit something really, really hard. You, you focus. Uh, the power comes from your hips. Of course, uh, and the smaller mm. car, the more important that is. I mean, it doesn't matter a hell of a lot if you're big enough, uh, because you punch a guy, and provided you're going to, you're going to use basic friction methods. Uh, it was there's there's been uh, uh, yeah there's and I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but I'm just going to see if you so 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 would there was there's been some um, uh, shihans and so forth that have said. So, so I used uh, three types of words, power, technique, and speed. And he would put them up on the board and, and so forth. Power is being recognized as the main source that so, so I would say. Another has said that technique has been one of the main focus points of, of that. How did you see what he was teaching you at that time. And again, at that time, I'm just trying to share with others how, how you know, you had the opportunity to trans train with him. He trained with you. You could, yeah. what, what was he gesturing as such within those? In for a those small words? person, for a small person, you need to use your whole body. To, uh, so technique is extremely important, mm. uh, but you've also got to develop power. 
mm. uh, with those techniques. And, and that's really, um, I guess, the result of what, what he was teaching me. Mm. Yeah. Technique in particular. If, as a smaller person, uh, you've got, got to make sure you use all of your body strength and uh and focus properly yeah 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 it's because you know you would have seen some things there you know on, on again in in understanding you know like this there's someone walking around in you know, or so say at the time who could bend a coin with his fingers who mm. could you know with the tamashiwari type type of you know breaking ice on national tv it was just things that no one had ever seen it was just unheard of yeah yeah well, he was uh, the nearest thing to a superhuman that I've ever met. Wow. Uh, you know, and um, when he when he walked around, you heard him. He wasn't softly, softly. You, you heard him, and yeah. uh, he was an immensely powerful guy, tremendous power uh, of his punches. So yeah. you wouldn't want to be uh, hit by them too often. Very and, good. Uh, you know, I was uh, I was a uh, uh just a little man compared to <laughs> to him and uh, tossed around but uh, it was a great experience oh, fantastic we appreciate you sharing that hanchi we've got we've still got some time left there's footage of you that i'll put up of you doing kanku dai kata on your 50th uh, anniversary there and it was fantastic how are you yeah. continuing and how do you see the i guess continuation of what you're learning as they all say you know we're still learning and 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 trying yeah. you know sharpening sides of things what and you know and you're you're what i'm alluding to there is the age side and the way you know staying fit staying healthy staying strong and then training in kata as such how how are you going with or how did you uh feel that that training as such has helped you you know with where you're at today a lot um, mm. A great deal. Keeps you alert, keeps mm. you fit and healthy and feeling well. Uh, I'm fitter now than I was uh, 20 years ago. Wow. And um, you, know, you, you, you just got to keep doing it uh, as long as you can until you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But, but is, uh, what, is, which, what is your favorite Carter? Which one is your favorite Carter? And I say that. Just, I see. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. Uh, but like, you know, the meaning of Kankudai, uh, there's never an end to what you learn in karate. Mm. So if you think you know it all, you're deluded. <laughs> so, Do you have you, it, kids? You just, gotta, <laughs> you just yeah. gotta keep doing it and doing it better every time. Of course. And every technique you do, you try to make it as good as you can as, mm. as the uh, as the best technique you've ever done. So, you know, it's always a learning curve and I'm always picking up things as well. Uh, mm. you, you know, I see Sean Mike do things in the mm. dojo. I think, yeah, that's different, but that's, that's fantastic. And um, he, yeah, it's, it's a real privilege training with him mm. and uh, with uh, Sean Alex and with uh, Sean Graham, mm. those three guys, true friends. Yeah. And, very very good karateka now for, we're very lucky of course to have uh Shen jimmy phillips Oops. come over here to our tournaments every time mm. so uh, his support is, is uh greatly appreciated and uh, yeah. he's a fantastic karateka as Oops. well as Yes, mm. yes, of course. Yeah, indeed. Hanchi, you know, uh, we appreciate your time. And, and, and again, you know, there's about five more minutes to go and truly blessed to hear some of those highlights and stories of, of the, that time in the early 60s. And I appreciate you sharing that. La uh, lastly, for me, and, and more so, is I always end some, some conversations with how the passion and love of what the art has done and martial art as such you know and and how you know you've just gestured it does so many good you know has so many good qualities and attributes for you and your legacy with New Zealand and around the world because there's going to be many listening to this from around the world in in finally hearing from Hunchy Dog Holloway you know I use the the appreciation that we are not fortunate to obviously be training with you or in your dojo there's so you know we're, we're elsewhere what's one of the big key key words or or you know um motivational you know key words that you use for the students 
for your students that you've had for over 50 years up to now? You know, is there something that you can share with us that gives the people at the end of this conversation some some motivation or inspiration and there are different meanings to those words? But what, what do you feel when I say something like that? The, the way to do cooking is vigorously and dynamically. Uh, and... Um, you know that that's that's vital and mm. uh, train hard. Uh, that's the whole idea of it is training mm. hard. And um, a lot of people have said to me, well, "What about uh, uh, what about the spiritual side and this sort of thing, meditation and everything mm -hmm. like that?" And what I tell them, the closest thing I got to meditation was was sitting in Caesar and. Uh, uh, at the end of the end of the class, yes. trying to trying to recover from what had just happened yes. in the last two and a half hours. That's yes. the that's the that's the meditation. Yeah. So yeah, and that's what taught me uh, in Japan to train hard, vigorously, and dynamically. Mm. And that's what you got to do. Uh, yeah. Karate is a strong sport, uh, you know, and chukshin is is a tough, strong sport. Uh, you've got to do, uh, give it your all every time. Yeah, isn't that a nice reminder for everyone? Indeed, hearing that from Auntie Doug Holloway, it's very special because I, I was trying to grab how, again, you know, the the way that it has evolved and things change and, mm. you know, society changes um, and all the above. And, you know, to hear that back from you, it, it still needs to, you know, the essence is a big a big part of that, you know, even what you just said. What uh, what we're seeing in Chukchen now, this type of the style of Chukchen, uh, fighting basics, Itageka, oh, uh, you know, uh, kata, uh, is slightly different. It's not better or it's not worse. It's just different. It's developed right. over the years. Um, tournaments have had a lot of impact on that change, mm. but it's certainly no worse and probably mm. no better than what we were doing back in 64, 65 right. uh, when I first uh, went up to Hombu. But um, we will be uh, featuring uh, 64, uh, 65 uh, Kumite on our Facebook, mm. Uh, mm. MLK and Z Facebook very soon. Mm. Which so will be very interesting. Hanchi, what an absolute honor it is to talk to you. Thank you again for your time. And, and again, to all the listeners, and some have said to me, well, keep talking, keep going. We want to find out more. And I, I truly wish we could, but I got to, you know, I was telling Hanchi earlier just before that this isn't, you know, we might be able to catch him another time. And I'd love to have a round table with uh, the Shihans from New Zealand and Han Chi, you know, and, 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 and do, I've got so many plans for this, this uh, podcast, this show, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see like how we, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it'd be, it'd be fantastic. And again, it's, it's to continue, you know, uh, the, the legacy of what is so many have done for, for us in the pathway of Kyokushin. And you, again, I can't speak uh, highly enough and respect you enough in, in regards to what you, what you did for New Zealand and what you've done for so many people uh, down, uh, down across the ditch. And um, Hanchi, it was truly an honor speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sensei. Awesome. Everyone, Hanchi Dog Holloway from Wellington, New Zealand, one of the highest ranked, if not the highest ranked, uh, you know, in New Zealand and more so uh, around the world. So an absolute privilege and honor. And to all the listeners, um, please put your comments at the end of this and uh, you'll see the Mock NZ uh, Facebook with Xi'an Mike Kenworthy and the team there and Xi'an Sean O'Connor, who we've had as well. So Hanchi, thank you so much once again. Thank you. Us.